You're, you're on the <laughs> the 16 year old mode. <laughs> you're doing this. What is he, well, he's trying to peel off the mask, right? <laughs> 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 oh my god holy boy wow well i'm glad you're back have you got any people emailing you about milk milking goats not uh, that we put your email up on the screen no. no it's just for for future i'll we'll we'll do a big reveal on on that i can't tell you what's happening there by the way how's the pizza that you're having there and i'm not barbecue chicken it's excellent it's a great pizza it's, it's a great pie that's, that's and, and, my, and, 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 and we can't hang out Thursday. I got that lecture yesterday. Oh, really? Can we hang out Thursday? Can we do pizza? Um, yeah, I don't know what you're doing there. No one can see it. It's not a podcast, by, by the way. It's an advertising shopping channel. <laughs> my God. Anyways, welcome everyone to the Late Night Restaurant Show. We've got a great guest. Perfect timing. On the show today, got an itchy nose. Give me an itchy nose. Dominic, welcome back. Are you focused? I'm focused, Jay. Super focused. <laughs> You're eating pizza. I'm. Uh, I'm sad I missed last night's conversation, but tonight's will be better. So it'll be awesome. Do you do you, do you need an organizer? An organizer for your office. Yeah. Um. Mm, a professional organizer. Possibly. What about a coach? So, oh, is that you is that who we had? Well no, we're having a coach a hospitality leadership coach on tonight. Oh. But do you have a coach? I do not have I, a coach. I, I technically call you my coach. Well yeah, but I, I know I, don't have up a on my I, I need a post. coach. I do you need, need a, a coach? coach. Oh for damn sure. Everybody needs a coach. Everyone needs a damn coach. Anyways, I think everybody needs, for sure. Yeah, everybody needs a coach. I think need a podcast. Need somebody need to talk coach. to. I don't know if you have to do it formally, but I think. Well, I, I don't know. Let's ask those questions a mentor, tonight. A mentor, a coach, um, a, a you Plumber? know, a confidant, somebody to to share ideas with that you, is not going to just a good, judge you. You need a good that. plumber, a good mechanic, both, both. <laughs> Well, we have a great guest on. You know what? I'm excited. He's awesome. I've got to meet him a few times, I believe now, and he's he's just he's what we need right now in the world, and definitely when it comes to our industry. There's not many of these guys around. That's why they're kind of like the holy grail. So it's a big deal tonight, Dominic. Focus. Cool. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm excited. What are you looking at? One of your 14 screens. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, gotta, let's gotta, get started. The news stories, the news stories ready. Are you watch? Are you reading the news? news? I'm, the, I'm the research. Um, what am I? The, I'm the statistician for our show, Jay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's. I can't even say that word, let alone do it. But all right, let's get rocking here. Let's do the intro, and we'll be right back with this amazing guest. Here we go. Cool. Welcome, Chris. Hey, awesome. Nice to have you. Jay, this is amazing. Thank you, Dominic. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, well, great, thank you. you, get, do, you do you want to take, can you coach Dominic <laughs> for the next hour? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I created a 
a pizzeria business plan when I quit drinking as a small year seven years ago. And I went down that pizza direction, so I applaud the barbecue chicken pizza for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, first of all, thanks again for joining us. And you know what? This is great. And by the way, it's not a podcast. So, well, Dominic, what are you doing? Just adjusting my mic, Jay. <laughs> I thought you were adjusting the chip. We, we all, I thought you were like peeling cheese off your pizza. <laughs> Seriously, I thought you were peeling pizza. Yeah. Peeling pizza. But anyways, Chris, tell us more about who you are. Your amazing, is it McFadden group? Is that how you say it? Oh, is McFadden. It? McFadden. Oh. McFadden. Irish. McFadden. Irish McFadden. Irish. Hi. Did I screw that up, Dominic? Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. Yeah, I um, I've been in the I was in the restaurant business for 25 years. Um, wow. I started, uh, back in '98 wow. in my home city here of Burlington, Ontario, as a host at Eastside Marios, and ended up going down the. Uh, Are you serious? Yeah, that was my starting point. The unlimited salad. Yeah, yeah and bread. Or soup, the the lovely Italian wedding soup. Oh my god, that was good. That was good. It was really good. Soup. It was funny. I started as a host there, and um, a dear friend of mine, still the girl I was dating, and she was a server there. And I remember when I was asking if I could transfer from being a host to a server, and my manager said that would be a conflict of interest. And I was like, well, I think a conflict of interest would be getting into a fight with my girlfriend and not seating her section for the evening. And it was like that makes sense. And the next day, I became a server, so it was good. <laughs> really? And um, yeah, so I I loved hospitality, but I was uh, I was a I was a theater kid, um, and kind of getting into the acting world when I was in my teenage years, and ended up uh, doing a kind of a piece of theater school in New York City at the Neighborhood Playhouse when I was nineteen. And, no way! Uh, I freaked out in Manhattan at nineteen, and I came home. And my mom threw an ad out to the Chateau Lake Louise. And this is just as Canadian Pacific had bought Fairmont. And uh, I ended up getting hired at the Wallacher Stube uh, at the Chateau when I was 20 years old. Wow. And um, fell in love with wine. So I started my sommelier training when I was 20. And um, I knew that was the path I was going to go down. So I ended up, um, I had failed uh, my diploma. And I failed three parts. And... Uh, I think the best moment in realizing what I was going to do was I went back down to New York to meet with the school again. And then I got headhunted in a restaurant to become a wine rep with Feral Select Wine Agency in Toronto. And then the same day in the mail, my dad's a very, my dad's a, a very well-educated man, but he was a cop for 25 years and pretty, pretty funniest man I know, uh, but definitely very, you know, to the point. And I remember sitting down for lasagna dinner at the house one night. I was 23, and he handed me two envelopes, and one was an acceptance letter to New York City, and one was a reacceptance letter to New York City, and the other one was a job offer with Barrel Select. My dad goes, "Is it the art of acting or the art of wine?" You got three days. And three wow. days later, it was the art of wine. I ended up getting my diploma that year in 2004, and that was it. I went thick into the restaurant business with a complete career. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's I loved, crazy. I loved it, man. I loved it. I loved it. I spent a lot of my years out in Vancouver. And I was with Oliver Bonaccini restaurants for a bit in Toronto. And uh, but I was in Calgary for four years. I was in Banff for a couple of years after Lake Louise that I was in for a year and a half. And um, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I was in the West for about 20 years. And uh, my wife and I were in Vancouver for about 13 years. Wow. And then it's brought you all back to where you are today in Ontario. You know what? It's funny when you start. I'm in my mid 40s now, and things start happening with family. And, and sadly, my mom's battling dementia, and my grandma's got Alzheimer's, and my stepmom was um, and my stepmom was fighting the fight of her life with cancer. And um, September of 2022, my wife said, "Why don't we make a, a change in our lives?" So we came back out in the middle of the decision to come out move out here officially two months later my stepmom had passed away of cancer and um so yeah it was time to uh it was time to come home you know it was time to be back in my in my world uh, and it's funny coming back here because i'm i'm seeing friends from elementary school and i said to my wife i was like i want to do a grade eight alumni party 
I was like, what? And I was like, yeah, we should regroup the crew. This is good. <laughs> so, so Chris, where, so now you're a hospitality leadership coach. Oh, where, 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 when did that come into the mix? Is it from the experience? Cause you got have been through a lot. Well, I went through a lot cause I was battling alcoholism. Um, mm-hmm. I was a sommelier, right? And wine's free. Right. I mean, I was, I was at a, at a heyday of my life where I was pouring Screen Eagle Cabernet by the glass for $750 a glass. I'd have staff. I had Harlan by the glass and Screen Eagle by the glass. And my staff were like, why is their bill $1,250 yet? And I haven't even touched the table. I'm like, it's good. They got two glasses of wine. I was in my, I was in my element. And I was at the highs of Canada Steakhouses. And I got to that yeah. too comfortable of a point of being a sommelier. And um, yeah, so 2017, I quit drinking. Um, so officially, I've been sober from heart alcohol and beer for just over seven years now. Wow. Wine, wine got the best of me again, where I was tasting too aggressively and it became a problem for me again. So it'll be two years in September that I've uh, I've hung up the wine glass again, which is great. So, Holy cow. But uh, yeah, I had to get, I had to, I had to reshift my life a little bit. And I realized that. You know, restaurants were a comfortable space for me as much anymore at the 14-hour grinds a day. And um, and I knew, so I, I joined another restaurant company in Vancouver, and um, and I just, I went back down in my own in my own tunnel, and um, mm-hmm. my wife goes, we should make a switch, and, um, and we did. And, but really, my big shift here uh, existed when um, I was leaving my partnership in, in Vancouver uh, at Piva, and... Uh, Edwin Kumar, who's been a dear friend of mine for years, he and I sat down one day to a what was supposed to be a half an hour coffee that turned into a five hour meeting. And he said, Is, did anybody ever talk about soft skills or emotional intelligence with you in restaurants? And I'm like, no, no, no. So we decided to do something with that. So we, um, I took about a year to write Restaurant Leadership 101. Uh, which is a course that we created to focus on emotional intelligence and soft skill development in restaurant leaders. We thought it's it's great. We started looking at this this break in retention, and all of a sudden, Vancouver was emptying through COVID and after COVID, after COVID, yeah. restaurant leaders that were just vanishing, and um, we couldn't figure out why. So we thought maybe there's something that we can try to do about that. And uh, the McFadden Group bloomed from there um, as the idea of doing this very more specifically. You know, Restaurant Leadership 101 is a 16-hour course that we teach um, wow. live through Zoom because we want to make sure that we're capturing as many people across the country and the globe, if you will, that we can. And um, yeah, in our first uh, year and a bit, we had 40 graduates across the country. And Andy Jones over in the UK took our course as well, you know, which is pretty awesome. And is that how he became our I know Andy. Great, great, great human being, man. He's a great guy. Yeah, I've been on, he's been on my show or I've been on his. I can't remember. I think it was on his. Yeah, awesome. Awesome what he's doing um, over over the pond, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so as a coach, can you tell us a little bit more around the coaching part of hospitality? Because I'm getting into it, obviously, with what I do on my daily job. Dominic coaches me every few minutes I call him. <laughs> right, Dominic? Maybe you should take a little <laughs> learning course here, Dom. Um, well, I'm going to find out how to how to do the proper billing. That's what I got to do. <laughs> You're pretty good at invoices. <laughs> it's a QuickBooks. QuickBooks. Yeah. Yeah, but what, what's, what's the biggest challenge you see out there? As as is there a lot of restaurants needing coaches? Like I, I hear it nonstop. Heard it again today. Like. Like you had 40 people grad, like it tells me that there's a demand for that support. But it, 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 I, you, I would hope that there was more, there was more, not, a, I don't want to say awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it takes a lot for anybody in, in life in general to say, Hey, we need some help. Yeah. And I agree. I think I in, the agree. Yeah. in the restaurant I, business, I, I would hope there would be like 400 graduates or 5,000, right? Because that's really what the need is, is every place. Jay, I think if you went to, if you went and you were really honest at at any restaurant and you looked at the service, the, the atmosphere, the attitude, the sort of the vibe, you, you would say 
they need help. They need training. They need, they need some systems. They, you know, they need some, some programs. They, a lot of it's like we're flying by the seat of our pants or we're, we're winging it because Mm -hmm. things have been so tough. And we've talked about this a lot. I, I, I know we have the, um, People just get stuck in the way in where they are and they say it's going to be too expensive and it's going to be, you know, we can't do it. We can't afford it. We, you know, all the, all the excuses and really their, their business, that's the thing that would help their business almost the most in having a system and having a better culture and having better employee employment, employee engagement, yeah. and more of that team. And um, I'm, I'm not saying 40 is not awesome. It is. It's awesome. Hmm, but cheers. you, yes. you, you, for, for sure, it, there needs to be way more of it, way, way more people. Well, and I think probably, you know, sorry, Chris, I just, I just going to say one more thing. It's like getting that word out there. Hey, there is stuff out there. There are good people to learn from. Th- these programs are available. There's right, people out there doing it. And coaching. And I, and, and I wish, and I, I wish, like it took a lot to get 40 people. Like it, it was a push. You know, the introduction emails and the conversations, mm-hmm. and, you know, the, you know, you get some, some restaurant owners that would go, so what do you do? So if my staff's having a bad day, you just come in and fix that. And it was like, this is a, like, we, we built a program. Like this is a 16 hour dive into the study of emotional intelligence and, and the conversation of change management and empathy and looking at what this encompasses within ourselves when we're taking care of our teams um, and very reflectively in the emotional intelligence sector of it was we got to take care of ourselves first. You know, there's always been this grind in restaurants where we've always put the guests mm-hmm. first and, and the mentality of that, we need guests, but we can't have guests unless we have our staff and we can't have our staff unless we've got our people leaving our restaurants. Um, so let's start there. Let's start working on the individuals to make them stronger for themselves to make them stronger for their teams and then to put more bodies in your room. When I was at PIVA, it was an amazing moment that we had through COVID where we were able to get 95% of our staff came back as we were half capacity. And we very simply said to our staff that you come first, forget the guest for a minute. There's millions of them, but if I don't have the handful of you, then we can't have the million of them. Mm. So if they see you walking in the door and you feel safe and comfortable to come in, that's a confidence builder for them as a guest. They're going to walk in your door and they're going to go, wow, they're, they're here four days a week. They came back. They feel safe. It was a powerful thing. It was a great, it was a great moment, you know, and if people didn't want to play by our rules in the restaurant, we invited them to go somewhere else. It was very simple. It was, this is about the safety of our team and the safety of ourselves. You know, I went through my own, you know, hiccups through it. My wife and I were going through a lot with trying to start a family and having a miscarriage and, you know, depression kicking in for me. And, you know, and through this whole movement, it was that I was taking care of my team, but I forgot to take care of me. I forgot to pay attention to what I needed. Um, And when I left, it was about a self-reflection. And I've spent two years working my tail off on making sure that I rebuild my own self-awareness so that I can have much more reflection within that. And it's, it's been a powerful moment. And I think because I, you know, I didn't really understand the coaching side of things for Mm -hmm. a long time. And it was all these conversations that came up with executive business coaching and, you know, you never really heard it flying in the hospitality world. Um, And it's been super powerful to see our collaboration, all of us, you know, in the space now wanting to, wanting to do good things for people and keep people interested in this industry. Chris, do you find that Canada may be a little bit behind in the coaching mindset right now in the industry? Or are we on, are we there yet? Are we coming? I want to say we're, we're coming. We're coming because the conversations are being listened to. Yeah. We're having the conversations, but they don't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. Right. So I've got a restaurant locally. See, that, Dominic, take some notes, bud. I got a restaurant locally that goes, so what do you exactly do that I can't do? 
You know, we've had people that have looked at us at our program because we say our handbook that we've written, you've mm-hmm. got access to that fully, right? Everything that we build with Restaurant Leadership 101, which we're now in a position where we, we're in a, a re, not a re anything. It's, it's, we're now continuing to develop it um, where it's going to be turning into Hospitality Leadership 101 so that we make sure we're encompassing everybody that's responsible for mm-hmm. it for the leadership within the business. And, um, but the conversation happens and then people go, so can we just send one employee then? And then we'll just teach the course ourselves because you give us access to all the stuff. And I'm like, sure. Edwin and I got 56 years combined experience in restaurants. This is, this is where our attention's gone on it. You know, trust us on what we're trying to do, right? We're, we're now dedicating our 14 hours a day at building tighter and stronger programs and, and developing what we can do to mm-hmm. be better for the community. Um, but I think the Canadian, you know, and I've heard it from a few companies and coaches out there that it's like, you know, there's a little bit more of a, do I need a consultant in Canada? Mm-hmm. Where I've heard in the U.S., they're like, come on in. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, I see that on Slop. I, I work with, like, I know Monty down in, in um in Seattle or not Seattle. He's in Seattle today, but down in uh, Florida and Monty's like, people are calling him left and right about this coaching and understand it and embracing it. And it just feels like we're a little bit behind here. I think we're on the right road to get there Mm -hmm. and it's fine. And maybe we're a little bit more um, cautious of bringing people into the businesses because maybe they're a little more brittle. Who knows? But, um, I do. I ask that question just because I do find as I start that program coaching and helping restaurants and restaurateurs out, moving the ball down the field. um, It's an interesting point because there's, there's just that you nailed it on that. Like, what do you do next? What's the next task? And is there a correct answer to that? Like, do you have the right answer in that next step that they need to do, or is that more just the position of how you take on a coachy and, and, and that journey is never the same way. Well, and I think it's, it's neat too, because there's, there's kind of two spectrums to this too, right? Where there's the individual coaching and then there's the team coaching. Yeah. Um, you know, I sat down with a, a management team before and had one-to-ones with all of them to find out very honestly and transparently what they think the problems are within the business mm-hmm. and let you put them back into a room together, you knowing what they've all shared with you, but them not knowing what the other person feels about something. Mm-hmm. And then you start to go down that, that pathway and that journey to say, let's talk about it. What do we need to do? How we can, how can we groom this and develop it and get it back mm-hmm. on the track that we needed to go? We all know the analogy of everybody's got to be on the same bus going in the same direction for this business to work. Um, and I think these old cliche word, you know, phrases that we had, um, like the time to lean, time to clean phrases, um, you know, they've, they've just kind of vanished, right? But I say this to my students at college. I'm like, you got to be on the same bus as everybody else. You got to go the same direction. This is where you achieve great things. And I think a big shift is happening, though, is that our younger generation is coming in much more vocal, much more, I want to be heard. And it's a shift of the older generation trying mm-hmm. to get used to that. You know, it's not so much about the autocratic leader anymore as it as it needs to be more of the transformational leader because these younger generations are coming in and going, well, we got a voice too. Mm-hmm. When I, I remember when I worked for Oliver Wanashini Restaurants, this is where I learned to line up everything with a string. Every yeah. to a T, you know, people used, my wife's a chef and people used to ask my wife, would you work for your husband? She goes, no, no, never. He makes you use a string to line up glassware. <laughs> one wine glass on the table and there's 24 that follow. It should just look like this one wine glass on the table. Yeah. You know, and I used to like, even I had a, I was watching a, a video the other day and this, this coach, I guess, um, but restaurant professional. And he had mm-hmm. said, you got to stop using training so much. In a conversation, it should be much more about coaching our teams, you know, developing a different mindset in it, and that it doesn't feel like it's the grind that you're doing, but much more of a supportive role um, coming from a visionary. And I thought it was, um, I thought it was an important comment. Mm-hmm. But you know, I used to sit my team down that didn't understand 
when I said, you know, the Riedel stamp has to be an inch above the knife, dead straight, so that people can see that we did things with intent. Are people going to notice it? Maybe not, right? Will Gardera said it on um, the, um, the 11 Madison Park you know, video about seven nights out where, <laughs> yeah, you know, when they flip up, where they flip up the plate and the emblem is yep. there and he goes, is anybody going to notice? No, but it means we do it with intent. So I used to sit my team down at a table that was perfectly set and one that wasn't set. And I'd serve them the same food at both tables, one perfectly presented and one not. And I said, do you get the difference? And they're like, got it. Great. Perfect. I was like, okay, so visual learners, this is what we're, this is what we're doing. And I think there's a powerfulness in that, but I think we can applaud that this younger generation that is coming into this business incredibly powerfully, um, they want to, there's a different recognition for it. And I think they're the ones that are more willing to get the coaching than the people that want to go from here to here. It's the people that want to go from here to here and that are striving for excellence at the gate. Um, I started seeing this with my own company now and how much more career coaching I'm actually doing with my leadership background and my emotional intelligence background now. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned. There's some cool updates happening to my website in, in the next month and a bit. Um, but I've got, I've got 16 clients that are coming to me come, and going, hey, how do, I, how do I move in? How do I get this job? How do I get this role? How do I go into this position? Mm -hmm. How do I develop into the next stage? Um, and there's a lot of that interest. There's a lot of career coaching interest. Um, but it, taking the leader that's been doing it for 30 years and saying, hey, are you okay? Do you want to have a chat? Is, is a punch. It's a little bit of a punch, right? People, it's a, it's a hit to the ego, I think. And maybe, you know what, I was in the business a long time. You know, I never thought to reach out for that. Maybe I should have at points through it. You know? Maybe I would have been different. I had a restaurant once that said, if you took your restaurant leadership course before, you know, you would work for us, what would have been the difference? I said, I wouldn't have quit three times in nine months. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you know, I think the perspective of it is important that people need to know that there's, there's conversational help out there. And it's not by people, you know, I, I did my time in restaurants and I love restaurants. It's the, this is the, yeah. the greatest industry period. Um, but to let people know that, there's 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 others out there that have mm -hmm. either gone through it or maybe should have gone through it to become you know a little bit better um, because there is that kindness out there to everybody wants every restaurant to survive mm -hmm. everybody wants every restaurant professional to stay in the business we don't want to lose everyone so if it takes a little bit of ego deflating to you know say hey let's get some help and I think we would we would have a stronger industry today. Dominic, you were going to mention something there. You had a well, moment. When he was talking about coaching and um, training, we we struggle with that ourselves. I, mine says safe check training. Um, my but website, you're a coach. Yeah, but, you're a coach. But, but just even from our branding perspective, yeah. um, we have safe check learning. Our LMS is safe check learning because – we don't necessarily like sometimes it is just training right but the the bigger part of that is it can't just be just training it it really has to be learning because if we we just get people to recite stuff and and you know quote numbers or quote quote legislation or whatever it is they haven't learned anything they're just memorizing facts and that's not that's not good from a from um from a sort of um, what the hell I'm trying to say here from a from a feeling from a, a group sort of think you've got to get everybody back to this on the same page but when there's um oh man when there's a when everybody when there's this culture of whatever it is, a culture of excellence, like you said, right? Or a, a striving for excellence. So not knowing you're going to be perfect, but at least trying to get there, lining up the, the glasses, using a string, do, doing mm -hmm. these things. When everybody's um, in this, I'm going to learn versus I'm going to, just going to be trained. I'm going to learn and that skill is going to go with them to wherever they go, right? Whatever the job. It's I, going to make a difference totally in their life right it's going to make a difference in every job they go to it that that attention to detail because that's what it is 
uh, for who's going to look at it. Well, one person may, and one person may notice. I walked into a you're restaurant. Doing it for one person. You're not doing it for 50,000 of them. No. If one person noticed, you did your job, right? Like I sat down at a table before and I looked at my wife and I'm like, we got to go. And she was like, what? And I was like, they're not expecting us. She goes, what do you mean? I said, this is a, we're in a high-end restaurant. Like, where's, where's, where's the intent? Like, where's, mm -hmm. where's the setup? Why, why is this out of order? And she was like, this is a big deal to you. And I said, it is because this is what I do, right? It's important. You know, when somebody walks in, just that feeling of, you know, the perfect seating, like just mm -hmm. being welcomed and walking into a table that looks put together. And this can be as very simple as the pub that just has roll-ups done right, you know? But I think more of the detail, um, I think it's been lost a little bit. And yeah, I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of posers or fakers out there that are, for lack of a better word, they're charging for that, but they're not, they're not delivering. That's a great and that's a letdown. We went to a really nice restaurant here on Saturday, and the person I was with, uh, she said that was excellent. The food was excellent. The service was excellent. The presentation was the sommelier was. She she asked. She didn't. She was afraid to ask a question. I says, "Ask. He's that. He's that's what he's here for." Yeah. Um, and and by the way, he had, he was sober too for three years. He stopped drinking. Um, it was, but um, the. Back to the intent, and I think the whole, if you're trying to be that, really try and be it. Don't fake it. Don't don't cheap out on it. Um, deliver on it because people, you notice, you're, that's, your, that's your job in essence. But still, other people notice. They don't have to be a hospitality coach like yourself to notice. That's that's it, right? And I you think that those comments on Open Table all the time. You know, the humanity of restaurants, when, you know, when realize, you know, I've got um, at college, I've got students that are new to hospitality. And I said, you know how great the future is for you? You're at the starting point. This is great. This is exciting. Let me tell you how great this business is and mm -hmm. what we're going to teach you. And we're preparing you for out there. Take it. Have fun with yeah. this. This is an amazing place to be. And I assure you, there's work out there. Lots yeah. of it. Lots of it, right? Yeah. So, Chris, do you find hey, that, uh, like... Jay, sorry, one more thing, Jay. Let me let me in here, man. It was like, um, I wasn't going to say anything. I'm, like, it's been a while. You've been milking yeah. goats. You come back all goat milked up. Um, our conversation with Monty and, and other people, um, what, Chris, what Chris is doing is, yeah, those future leaders, the ones that do it right, yeah, their their possibilities are endless for sure. Um, letting people kind of just get by, slack off, do do whatever they want, have their phones out on the floor. Jay, if you remember that conversation, do you just, remember that one? I was, it drives me crazy because you don't the see, other coach getting cranky. Said, well, let them do it. Let them do it. And me and Monty were saying, "Are you effing nuts? Like, what do you? No." <laughs> Don't See, let him do it. Absolutely not. Stuff like that. Um, <laughs> the phone world on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get started. Here we go. But you I think going. Chris is one hundred percent right in that if um, if these skills aren't taught and or you know people don't take them, but but there there is lots of people out there who want to learn it, and there's a demanding well, yeah. customer out there that yeah. wants this, yeah. and more and more to that of, to that point even. But here, here's the thing too. I think that it's the it's the not the adoption, but it's it's the it's the shift over. It's the maybe evolution mm. that we get there, and it's just a part of it. It's just a, I think also the other thing I want to bring up, Chris, um, is that do you find the generations today, not the new generations that are coming into our industry, but the older generations that they want that silver bullet. They want the silver bullet and making things, everything fast and efficient and don't want to put the time in and, and want it fixed tomorrow. Because I, I, I'm having that feeling right now with one of the coaches I'm working with. You know, it's funny. We went to, my wife and I went uh, to a restaurant uh, in Toronto the other night. Busy, busy, big, big space. Um, and I'm watching, I'm just watching. And I'm like, 
where's the management? Like we're talking thousands of people a day are pumping into this restaurant, thousands. And the server says to me, she go, I said, how are you, how do you have a lot of servers on tonight? Like just out of curiosity, like I'm not, mm-hmm. it's not poking prodding. It was just, Hey, out of curiosity. And she goes, yeah. She goes, but we're all really good. And I was like, okay. Right. She goes, but two of us are pulling a section tonight. I was like, how many tables do you have? She goes, 20. I was like, what? No so you, you both have 10 tables each, but then you're backing each other up on those 10 tables each. That's madness. I'm like, where's hostess team? Amazing. Strong. They knew what they were doing. You could see there was a couple mm. servers that had clearly been doing this for years, confident, built just for the, the role. Mm. Um, and our server was great, right? But it was 20, 20 tables between two of you. That's Whoa. madness. That's madness. And in an hour and a half, where there wasn't a single manager anywhere to be seen. Why? Why? That drives me nuts. Dominic? Why? Drives me nuts yeah. too? Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially today, like when you think of the cost of dining out, which ain't cheap. It's not cheap. No matter, no matter where you go, you just want that extra little bit of love. Yeah. I find you just want that a little extra. Hey, how's everything? Dominic, hey. like, you dine out a lot. You see, you see this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. For, I'm, I'm with you on that. I don't, I don't necessarily look at it like that, but I, I do like, especially in fine dining, Somebody comes over, the chef would be awesome, but the manager, how is everything? Can I get you anything? Sam's taking care of you. If you need anything, I'm also here. Like that little extra touch, it takes less than a minute. Um, not only, like you say, Jake, gives you a little bit of extra love. Um, I For a restaurant from, from last, from two days ago, I, I sent them a private message about, you know, the bread being stale, all this stuff, high end restaurant, right? It's like, Hey, you're, I, I didn't put that review on, but I sent the private message saying, here's all the things that were wrong. Right. I didn't, I didn't even want it off the bill. I, I told the server, I don't want it off the bill because I don't want it to affect your tip. And that's not your fault. Right. That's not your server. Mm-hmm. That's not the server's fault, but your kitchen really needs to know about it. I appreciate I, when you did that as a private yeah, for well, 100%. I, I believe in that 100% because the, the restaurant needs to know. And too often, they don't get that feedback. The person will just go. Or it's public shop. feedback. Or it's public feedback. Well, it's public. And that doesn't help anybody either. No, it doesn't help. Really well, I, I use this analogy with some of my students, um, international students. And some of them just got here. And I'm like, are you going to trust Irene? They're like, who's Irene? I'm like, the review that you just read that decided whether or not you were going to go to this person's restaurant or not. Go give it a shot. Go and read negative reviews and then go in and change that. Right? Yeah. I said, you know what better restaurants would be? I remember the days of when John Gilcrest was, you saw his name in the book and you're like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Right? Everybody's in full attention. Right? At the Belvedere, we were in jet black suits, black ties. We had that Lumiere look to us. Um, and when John Gilchrist was coming in, Everybody was at attention, right? We didn't worry about Google reviews. We worried about when that newspaper came out and getting the first copy before anybody else saw it. <laughs> like, you know, you know what's funny about John Gilchrist, <laughs> Dominic? You've heard this, yeah. and I don't mind putting it on our show because I know he's retired. I think he's yeah. in Europe. I think Elizabeth says he's over in Europe somewhere. Um, he he gave me the lowest rating he's ever given. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, and, and trust me, he's probably bang on. We probably deserve it's a badge it. of honor. <laughs> it's not an honor you remember, but when you say his name, I'm like, I know John very well because I was his lowest rating ever. <laughs> so, but uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. It's not the honor you want to say. I got the highest rating. I got the yeah. lowest. You know, but I'm telling all, all everybody in my circle that, that I'm like, just leave positive reviews. If you got a problem with it, fire a note. Off to the, the group. The, the restaurant deserves it. The restaurant needs it. Now, my, my hope is for, from that side, and I, I ask this to, to people that I know and people that are in the restaurant business, do you read those and do you really do you really honestly go and look at what mm-hmm. you've done and say, hey, that's real and we need to fix it? 
or that's just a bunch of crap. And, you know, do you just write, you know, you, but you, you probably met chefs and owners like this. Well, those people, they don't even know how to eat, eat a sandwich. Right. Never mind. Right. Come to a restaurant. Mm-hmm. I've, I've met lots of people like that. Lots. The customer's wrong. The customer doesn't know what they're talking about. It's yeah. Like, the well, defensive. It's I'll, defensive. I'll, it's got to be I'll normal. Sure. Yeah. It's normal though. I think that's normal. We want to defend. We want to defend our temple. Well, it's funny because I think success comes from you know, progress comes from being honest with yourself. Well, you yes, have to accept it. You have to accept it. Absolutely, right? You know, I had this server that looked at me and I because I'd asked for something specific with I like if I order wings, I like the drumsticks. I don't like. I don't like working through. You don't like the flats. I'm yeah. Push the meat through, right? So I was like, "Is there any chance that I can just get drumsticks?" Right. Also, I'd rather just have celery and no carrots. She's like, "Sure, let me see." Right. She comes back. She goes, "I guess the chef's in a bad mood tonight," because he said no. And I was like, "That's how you. That's how you just <laughs> brought that back to you? Really?" She's like, wow. "The celery's fine." And I was like, "Great, celery's fine." And that it's not a big deal. It was just, a, "Hey, is it possible?" She's like, "I guess he's in a bad mood today." Maybe because you've got a 20 table section. Like, exactly. <laughs> right, right? is the food sitting up in the past? Like, oh my Lord. You know, wow. when we're talking about this coaching thing, let me give you another kind of tidbit of, you know, interest. So I got a, a really close friend of mine from when I was a kid. Um, she, I recently um, got my addiction recovery coaching certification through the World Coach Institute um, with other certifications that I just decided to dive into for my own. Um, for my own education and continue my own growth. Mm-hmm. And Carolyn Barrett uh, owns a company called Sober Me, which is a recovery coaching program. And her and I sat down last year and I said, I think it would be really cool if you became kind of the company and then have people in certain sectors that have battled this be the coaches within that sector. So you should have the restaurant guy, you should have the Bay Street banker, you should have whatever else may be, but have specialized coaches within your company that you can partner out to people that are in those industries that are struggling. That's a great, wow. idea, right? That's smart. So the Fadden Group and Sober Me have done a collaboration together. And um, we were, her and I were talking the other day and she goes, it's funny because I was talking to a, a great recruiter, um, Val Uphold, um, who was my old, HR director 20 years ago at Olive Bonacini restaurants. And she was interested in what we were doing. And she goes, you know how great it would be if you guys could position yourselves to be the coaching service that restaurants use, that if team members are suffering, right, and going through that battle, because you can't just get fired for it on the spot, maybe you could be the service that is offered to these HR directors says to their staff, we're going to take care of you. So Carolyn's been approaching this to restaurants and she goes, it's a struggle. She goes, the owners that I'm talking to, go, no, no, we have no problem with alcoholism in our restaurants. <laughs> and I thought, wow. Okay. Oh, well, you. The, you know what? And God bless Kristen, Marvin and I you know, connected last week. I'm doing a, a show with her next week. Um, and I loved the whole inspiration on, you know, let's focus on non-alcoholic beverages that highlight the after work drink, you know, and what's mm. next market is there for it. Um, but the battle's there. You know, I had 17 sommeliers in, across the industry that reached out to me and said, how did you do it? How did you quit drinking and stick with this? You know, how can you do the business with it? You know, so that's a different element of the coaching world that, you know, we're trying to branch out and get people to know that, you know, it's not just about AA. It's not just about smart recovery. It's, you know, you just have a conversation with somebody that's, that is on it on more of that, not as a member you know, of it, but more on the coaching side of it that can help help you and help you understand where you're at and where you're growing. And I think that's a huge thing that's still happening in restaurants because it's a deficit move for all of us to do when we're in the struggle, right? Grab a glass, have a sip and continue on. And if you have too many sips by the end of it, that's a problem. Do you find, Chris, that we will never like as soon as we open the door of our, like once you start coaching or you're getting coached, it doesn't stop though. Right. It doesn't stop. Like, does it ever stop? I don't think it does, but you know, you know what? Maybe that's not a fair thing to say. I mean, you can go and see a counselor for your, for your life and yeah. to the point where you're comfortable and confident. Um, and I think coaching has that aspect to it, but I think, 
the the continuity of somebody knowing that the door is not closed it's mm -hmm. not like a hey all right good luck right it's a let's see how we do for the next few weeks right see where you get to see where you grow um where you take with what we we talked about and, and how we again it's not training right it's coaching yeah. you know, it's making somebody know that that it's 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 guidance in a different direction um i think we're in a really good place in this conversation because there's there's a lot of us trying to do better things for people um you know i i, I think um david hopkins at the 15 group that i have um well been building relationship and um you know working with um you know his team and we had marie one of his consultants in restaurant mm -hmm. 101 and um you know he had said it best to me and i was wowed by it and it was when i we did a restaurants canada guest um, speaker spot two years ago and david i said i just wanted to shake your hand and i said i find it amazing that you're looking at jim taylor and myself your vp and you're you're the president of the 15 group you're mm -hmm. you're the guy right like you're the guy yeah. and I, he goes this has nothing to do with us competing with each other this has everything to do with us complimenting each other yeah it's about us and with the exact same end goal and that's to create better hospitality and better better people and better businesses and stronger entities we're we're all on the same path trying to do good things for restaurants yeah you know it's funny you say that well funny maybe is another word but um we say the same thing like sean walsh chef you know we always talk about the rising tides mm -hmm. and he, i always bug him about that and mm -hmm. Monty and myself, and there is times when you are in the field working with places or you want to be better or, you know, there's a competitiveness. And I think Sean opened my eyes a few years ago when I met him in Toronto at a conference we were doing and just hearing his mindset about how he supports so many others. Mm -hmm. And Dominic, you do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you're always yeah, supporting right, people sure. and you're yeah. helping so many people and all these different things. Um, and it's not competitiveness. And I think there's that, I think you cross that bridge, like, they, like you get over the hump of realizing it's better when you work together. It's no different than we're offering free advertising on our show for the next two months on our newsletter and different things like that we're doing. And a lot of people are looking to make money and all these different things. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But when you get into the fact of giving more than you are asking for, I find it fascinating, addictive, and it feels good. And it's the right thing to do. And I think we need to do more of that. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. There you go. Yeah. Well, we should wrap up too, because I also don't want to take all your time away because I know you're important. Dominic, are you okay there? It's good. I'm three hours ahead of you, man. Oh, you're like, you're it's right, nap right, time right, for right, you. Right. It's bedtime yeah we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not hours. if i can make just a, a, a comment here is i think resilience is such a key word now in mm. this business you know and that was that was the speaker spot that we had done at restaurants canada so jenny companion and the vp of, you know 15 group you know it was so neat to have jim taylor her and myself all have this perspective of it and it was all in the same path you know and mm -hmm. if we're building more resilient people and if we can help coach people into having more resilience within themselves um, you know, our business is going to continue to or, or get back on that path of constantly, you know, driving towards greatness in every little level and element of it. Um, but gosh, it's a good industry, man. I love this business and I love being on this side of it and being able to help <laughs> more people out there and taking the, the starting ones and grooming them to get them up and taking the ones that are already in it to make them have that reminder of how good it is. Yeah, but it I think is. we're all doing really cool things. I think it's awesome. Well, Chris, I want to thank you again for joining and jumping oh, on here and you. having a good conversation around this. I find it fascinating. Dominic, you okay? You look a little looking at birds again? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you bird watching? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just checking out sober me and uh, <laughs> and what they, what they do. He's, he's there. What did you call yourself? Statistician statistician oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> he's the statistician of the show but chris honestly thank you again for everything you do and Thanks, what you chris. do for our industry nice it really you. means it's oh, awesome stuff great. what you're doing and 
We need more coaches. I've said this millions of times, Dominic. We need more coaches, more podcasters, more plumbers, and more people like Chris. Um, oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, I know. It really means a lot. You, so. man. you guys, gosh, you, you're just you're tremendous elements in this industry. And uh, yeah, I'm super inspired by uh, by all your work. Uh, so thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, helping That me. guy right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, Chris, yeah. we're gonna let you go, Dominic. But no, don't go anywhere. For a I want to just chat with him for a sec. Yeah. Well, don't go anywhere, Chris. Anyways, oh, we're gonna oh. wrap up here. And Dominic, there's another winner. Winner, winner, chicken winner. dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, very cool. What what they do, and yeah, you, Jay, I, you're bang on. I think I, to his point. Yeah, maybe it stops, but I don't think it really – it might stop formally coaching, mm-hmm. you know, formal. like. But I think always having somebody to talk to – It's to the mindset, though. You need a exactly. mind, it's the mindset. So if you accept coaching, um, like I don't know how many times well, I call you a day. Well, they used to call it a lifelong learner, right? Like it's just somebody well, to share an idea did. with, right? But here's the thing is that – the world is too crappy right now with situations mm-hmm. and stuff to make decisions without just throwing it at you. How many times I call you? And like you're like, don't do that. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I I think about when the situation I'd go into, I'd be like, don't admit, oof, I would have done that. I would have been done. <laughs> really, God. So I think it's important that we look at these. We bounce ideas off people. Craig Car- and if it, this is the world we live in, because we have to have yeah. a coach. To talk to someone about shit, so booy, so no, be we're it. Better. I think we're not better. We're, we're better, better at we're, it. We're, beca- we're better because of it. We're the more 100%. back to what you said about Sean and other people. Like, and you know yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm like that. You're like that. The more we collaborate and work with each other, the better both of us are going to be. Some of us it's are going to called... move ahead. Go ahead. Qua- yeah, it's called it's competition. 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 It's called competition. You can Google that there. You could That's Google right. that there. Your, your what did you call you? Statistician. You put that on your safe check training. Well, I, title. I like re- I, research analyst sounds better, but <laughs> <laughs> that sounds better, way better. But no, this, seriously, look it up because it really is. Is we got to stop competing, people. The world is too messed up to compete. We have to collaborate. We have to work together, support each other, and I think it's going to be important as we move forward. Because it ain't getting easier out there on your own. I'm telling you that. No, 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 no. no you can't do it. See, did you find it? I told you. I found it. Yeah, first, first I, I read once in a while out of the time yeah, I spend with nice. you. Good reading. <laughs> Anyways, that's a wrap. Another show done, Dominic. Thanks, Jay. You can go you, back to milking goats for you tonight. Yes. Buddy. All right, here we go. We're gonna wrap up. We'll chat later. Bye. Oh, he's here. Oh, he's there. There he is. Well, of course. Yeah, that's good.